Becoming is better than being. And that's precisely why we here in this table agree on. that we are a work in progress. It means that uh -huh. you are never complete and you always have that <laughs> opportunity to become someone better. Indeed, it means that we are never complete. No. Mm -hmm. It means that we have, <laughs> we the, have ability the ability there to become go. comfortable with making mistakes, yeah. as I have just done, as we have both just done. So consistently do. <laughs> And, be, and get ready and get to a point where you can accept yourself for who you are. Wow. Mm. Yes, we can all agree we are a work in progress. Hi, I'm Anna. Hi, I'm your host, GK. And I am AX. Welcome to the show. So, before we get into any further things of the discussions, because today we're going to have some deep conversations, some yes, sir. hefty academic conversations. Mm. So, before we do that, um, one of our very own, MC Squared, has created a game for us. He told us, you guys are a political channel and so you should understand some things to do with some politics mm. but he realized none of us talk about local politics we all talk about the big politics so he's this is a quiz on governors just so you know we asked him for something fun and this is what we this, got this, this yeah, is yeah, what is fund mc squared exactly that exactly that so that is how the game is it's very simple each of us have been given a series of questions to ask the next person and the conversation is simple. We just have the person gets the best from there. Except teacher, teacher, I, uh -huh. I fear I have lost my slip. If Anna wouldn't mind lifting this, I think it's, I might be under her book. I fear I may have lost my slip. It's okay. Well done. We, we move. Well <laughs> <laughs> we move. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. We, we, we will fix. Ah, I, right, I found it. I found it. I found it. Okay. A star <laughs> for, for AX continuing to prove how much of a work in progress she really is. With so pride. AX. Because you're the person who was struggling at first, why don't you ask the first question? I'm asking them to you. Oh, it's to me. To you. No you shouldn't have been so cocky. No that's problem. That's so case. arrogant. Ah, it's okay. All right. Mm -hmm. The governor of Nairobi is? Johnson Sakaja. The governor of Kakamega is? Uh, Ferdinand Baraza. The governor of Garissa is? Interesting question. <laughs> so interesting. <laughs> the governor of Garissa uh, is? Oof. Skip. Give me someone else. Give me the someone governor else. of Kisi. Uh, Simba Arati. The governor of Kilifi. Governor of Kilifi. Is it a lady? It's a guy. He used to be the former CAS, I think, for lands. Very good. Very good. Good job. <laughs> no idea. Okay. The governor of Kajiado is called? Uh, Olelenko. First name. J Olelenko. <laughs> no, what's his first name? His first name is not J. It's J. It's it J. starts with a J, but Everyone it's not J. Everyone knows him as Olelenko. Okay, fine. I'll give you that Olelenku. one. Olelenko. So now, the governor of Makweni is? Mm, the governor of Makweni is, it was, it was one of the, my favorite governors, which was, uh, it was someone called uh, Kivutha Kibwana. And now? And now, it is someone called... Ah, Mutula Kilonzo Jr. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it seems like the one that stumped you is the governor of Garissa. And I and feel like I need to have words with MC Squared because these, these were some easy ones. Mm -hmm. <laughs> MC Squared. Uh, who is the governor of Garissa? Nathif Jama. I was going to... You were, you were far. far. <laughs> you were so <laughs> far. Kilifi? The Kilifi Gideon Mungaro. So you got one. You got Nairobi, you got Kakamega, you got Makweni, you got Kisi, you got uh, Kajiado. Very so impressive, GK. Anna. No, it's me. Five out of seven. Let me just say, I am going to be an example of being a work in progress. Mm -hmm. So, you know. No excuses here. <coughs> uh, Many times on this channel, oh on no. this table, you guys have talked about how you stand for women's rights. Uh, this election had a number of female governors getting elected. Uh -huh. Name them all. Okay. Mm -hmm. Susan Kika. Wow, you got one. Anway Guru. You got two. Wavenia Wav Detti. Uh, she got three. Um, Why are you so <laughs> surprised? <laughs> then there's uh, the one from Meru, which is... Ooh. Okay, let's brush through her. There's mm -hmm. seven, right? Yes. Uh, there are seven. Um, she is doing much better than I thought. She, Anna is brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> you, you I'm blanking. Mm -hmm. Put some Susan, respect on her Kika? name. You said Susan Kihika from Nakuru County. Yes. Mm -hmm. You said Anwai Guru from Kirinyaga County. And you've said Wavinyan Detti from Machakos County. 
Isn't Should I give you some counties? Yes. So there's Kwale that I you have I was going said. to say uh, the governor there's Kwale is a Meru, chair. There's Embu. There is um, Lamu Homa Bay. Those are the four you haven't yet gotten. Meru, there's an M and a W, right? A, a name starts with a W. No. An M. The last name starts with an M. And the first one is a K. Yes. And I'd, I say, I'd say the last reason. part of that, <laughs> Ra, okay, Ra Cecily, is like the last part of that name. Cecily something. Ooh, should I give you that? No. Yes, yeah, no. Cecily something. I gave you Olelenku. Everyone knows him as Olelenku. His first name is Joseph. Joseph. Miss Cecily. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> and I have the initials for Meru, as I like to call him. I'll give you, I'll give that half and half. So, so, so four out of seven. Let's say okay. that, okay? Mm. So the people you didn't name, Fatuma Achani from Kwale, Kwale County. Okay. You didn't ma name Kawera Mwangaza from Meru County. Okay. There yeah. you go. Cecily Mbarire. Mbarire. You know, and okay. Gladys Wanga. Ah. Uh, but Gladys Wanga. But well oh. done. Four out of seven. So, so far, best done is, is me, but let's see how... Oh, yeah, no, no, does. this is going yeah. to be a bloodbath. If, oh, Anna, if, if, if Anna was showing you what a work in progress is like, <laughs> allow me to show you what a work in progress begins as. Oh, yes. Okay. This is pre work in progress. Pre work in let's, progress. Let's go. Mm. let's go. Okay, so mm. name the governor for Mombasa. Yeah. Nasir. First name? Uh, ah. Yeah, yeah, you have to get his first name because all of us trip on his first name. I know there's a Sharif this there. That's his nickname. Abdul. Mm. Uh huh. Abdul Swamad? Yes. Oh, correct, yeah. yes. Abdul Swamad. Okay. Uh -huh. uh, Tharakanidi? I'm mm. going to skip. <laughs> okay, Nyandaro? I will I'm also skip. skip. <laughs> Nyeri. Now I'm going to skip to my loo this one. <laughs> Nyeri. <laughs> Nyeri, okay. Uh -huh. Okay, Muranga. Muranga? <laughs> <laughs> Kiambu? Okay, no. I don't. I don't. I don't. Look, you, look. You are also from Kiambu County. I am not from Kiambu County. I, no, 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 no. Before. I've never lived in Kiambu my my whole life. I've lived in Mombasa County, Nairobi County. That's it. And those are the governors that I know. Hey, this is bad. Okay. Okay. Lastly, like keep you. Yeah. If she's not gonna get the other, she's not getting it. <laughs> Okay, let's see if I can get any, okay? Oh, and I've been... Um, Darakanidi is Mudhomi Joki. I don't know if you could see the paper, though. Let's not no. trust this. <laughs> <laughs> Darakanidi is Mudhomi Joki. Mm -hmm. um, there's one that... Yandaro? Was, Mutahi Kahiga is for Nyeri. Yeah. Uh, let's go to... Uh, Wamatangi. Oh, you won! Kiambu. Oh, good mm -hmm. for him. First name? Who knows him by his first I name? He was known. Moses. He was known for giving away free so water. He's, the, he's called the jungle, yeah. Him. No, that's oh. another no, guy. That's okay, well, then. you're doing very well. Um, Irungo Kangata, Muranga. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, I sh I should know who that is. <laughs> yeah, you've done many columns again <laughs> against uh, the poor man. <laughs> who was? Which other is left? They keep you. I, like here, the, the 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 person after Derito Moredi. That's not helpful. It's like me saying I will be the host after GK. Unfortunately, GK is here forever. There we go. Um, I don't know. Okay, so uh, Nyandara and Lakipi, I don't know. Nyandara is Moses K mm -hmm. Kiari. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Nyeri Mutahi Kaiga. Mm -hmm. Muranga Irungu Kangata. Mm -hmm. Kiambu. Eh, Kiambu Kimani Wamatangi. Um, Wamatangi. And Lakipi like Joshua Irungu. There you go. Uh, okay. Okay, so there we go. I think we can all agree who won this one without Me? even fail. No. Oh, okay. Whoa! Well, no. I mean, actually, 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 I'm going to say that Anna is a surprise winner here. Yes, I surprised yeah. myself. Because it's, we expect you to know about your country, Karini. MC it's, squared, it's, it's, sorry, GK, it's you. You assume that someone who loves their country will know about their country. Yes. yes. Uh, so are you guys saying you don't love your country? You fell into that trap by yourselves. <laughs> I, have, I will say, um, to use Facebook terms, mm -hmm. it's complicated. Wow, mm -hmm. wow. Okay, so now that we're done with the icebreaker, we're going to get into the conversation. And it's, it's, it's a bit of a deep one. It's a bit of an interesting one that AX is really going to take the front off because this was really something she believed that needed to be discussed. And it's about earning. And not just earning as individuals, but mm -hmm. earning as the people who are elected to serve you. Yes. We did governors. Governors are elected to serve you. 
But the issue is not necessarily governance. It just feels like there's been an endless cycle that when a new group of MPs are brought in, the first um, job of business is to ask for more money. And then there's these um, rumors that continue to go around saying, oh, we need to you know, tighten the belts. Mm -hmm. The economy is really bad because mm -hmm. of the Ukraine war, mm -hmm. because of, um, all of COVID. So why now are you continuing to ask for more money? So the question is all around that. So I'll yes. leave it to you, AX, to, con to create the premise and then okay. we'll have a discussion. So we first need to get into, if we, do you guys know how much an MP earns in Kenya? I know like how much an MCA earns. Is it like 700k or something? Okay, thereabouts, yeah. thereabouts. Okay, so, so, let, so let me just, before I break down the numbers, which you're going to see somewhere on your screen, I hope mm -hmm. it's not going to cover my face. Um, rude. <laughs> okay, so as, as, as I'm going through these numbers, I want you to remember that in 2018, 75% of salaried Kenyans earned less than 50k. 75 percent 75 percent right um according to trading economics the average salary of kenyans is twenty one thousand seven hundred and fifty shillings per month that's the average that's the average i want you i want you to keep that number in mind twenty one thousand seven hundred and fifty is the average salary for most kenyans mm -hmm. having said this <laughs> this is what an mp is going to earn okay seven hundred and ten thousand shillings as your gross monthly salary gross okay as part of that salary, 426 is your basic salary, mm -hmm. 150 is for your house allowance, mm -hmm. and then 134,000 is something called salary market adjustment. 150,000 yeah. is for your house allowance. Yes. So you get, so we, we, take me to the river slowly here. So you get, so you, you so get your- So 700,000. Is, is your- Blanket. Is your blanket, is your gross, On right? top of 700. No, 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 as no, part of your 700. As part of the 700, yeah, okay, you, fine. You get 426 as your basic salary. Okay. Then you get 150 as your house allowance. Uh -huh. And then you get 134,000 as something called salary market adjustment, mm -hmm. which is basically like to compensate you for leaving the private sector to come to work for government. Because the idea is that private sector is going to pay you a lot more, so we need mm -hmm. to en entice people to come to government. Are they going to pay you a lot uh, are more? They? <laughs> wait, 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 wait. It gets okay. Look, remember how I've just said that MPs get one hundred fifty thousand as a housing allowance. Mm -hmm. They also have access to a thirty-five million shilling mortgage facility, where the interest rate is three percent per year. Mm. In Kenya, the average interest rate for your mortgage is ten point nine percent. My people, wow. um, I think we can agree first and foremost that I am officially tendering my resignation, uh, resignation <laughs> and applying to become an MP. Wait, no, 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 for it gets fifth estate ward. It gets fifth estate constituency. It gets it, it gets better, right? <laughs> they also have a seven point five million shilling motor vehicle purchase reimbursement scheme, mm -hmm. which is that the government will not buy you your car. Mm -hmm. You go buy your own car, and then the government will pay you back. Mm. Right? That one I'm not against. So they get 7.5 million shillings. Mm. And then the deal comes with about 350,000 shillings per month as a car maintenance allowance. 350,000? Per month to maintain your car. I have owned a car my whole life. Yeah. Oh. Do you, have you ever spent that much money maintaining it? Per month. Per month. Wait, what? Per year. <laughs> Five years. Per month, <laughs> which means <laughs> we have to keep climbing, for <laughs> right? And then on top of that maintenance allowance, they also get mileage, right? That's a really good job. So mileage is that MPs get reimbursed for weekly trips to their constituencies at a rate of 116 shillings per kilometer. So it's no longer meeting the cost of fuel. So you're losing money anyway, right? It's but per, if per kilometer though, not per liter. Oh damn it! Yeah, it's per it's per kilometer. Never mind. Oh yeah, you're making money hand over fist in this mm -hmm. one. So um, if, if for example an MP's constituency is 300 kilometers from Nairobi, mm -hmm. i.e. you're an MP of Nyali in Mombasa, mm -hmm. right? It means that you'll be reimbursed 69,000 shillings per week for the cost of you going there and back. If per you went every day. If you went, if you went every day, basically. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then the, and per month, it comes to about 279,000 shillings. Mm. And this is just your mileage allowance, mm -hmm. right? Which means if you add all these things together, plus 15,000 shillings for airtime, for mm -hmm. airtime, MPs can make 1.5 million shillings per month, just handed to them. Mm. And it was actually going to be more. Um, it's just the Salaries and Remuneration Commission scrapped the sitting allowance where MPs were going to get 5,000 shillings per day every time they showed up to Parliament. Great perks. Yeah, fantastic perk, mm -hmm. right? Um, so um, this is how much they're making. Um, keeping in mind that the most Kenyans on average earn 21,000 21, 21, per month. Do you guys think that's fair? I had to actually struggle with this one because you know you have to ask yourself very clearly Am I against this? Yes. That's the question you ask yourself. And I really thought hard, and I'm not 100% sure that I am totally against it. You see how I've organized my fence sitting very well there? You're not totally <laughs> sure you're not totally against it. <laughs> you and fence sitting yeah, out, fence out, out to the fence. The message. <laughs> I've, I've organized it very well there. To, you fenced to, yourself <laughs> in, DK. Uh, because 
on one hand, it does create um, a, a crisis that they're earning so much more because already I feel that the, the political space has created an environment for the last 60 years in which being an MP and being a leader is not necessarily just about mm. service. It's a business decision. Um, and for the most part, I feel the political calling is a service calling. Yeah. It's service first, then now make the perks later. Mm. But I also know how Kenyans behave. <laughs> Look, that MP is going to make 1.5 million shillings. Per month. Per month. For the next five years. Uh, that's the most Whether or not they speak up in parliament, whether or not they, they defend their that. constituents. It's too complicated. It's not no. complicated. No, if no. you're being paid to do a job, do I'll, it. I'll allow me to continue. Okay. Sorry. He's paid 1.5 million shillings a month. Mm -hmm. That means for a year, if he gets it really well, he's earning... 13? No, 15. Something. Three, a, 18, a good amount 18. of 18 million. I think, yeah. Okay. Now, count that times five. 18 times five, that's... North of 70 million. Let's just say that one MC squared is not here. Isn't it like 80? <laughs> Let's 90? Say it's north it's 90? of 60 million. Maybe. That's, that's what I'm going with. <laughs> now, at the end of those five years, he's going to come and request his people to, uh, to vote for him again. Mm. Them voting for him again is going to cost him what? Let's say 20 yeah. or 10, whatever he, he decides. Mm. Um, or five if he's um, decided to be cheap. That's what it's going to cost him. Then every day, his house is being bombarded by people asking him for money for fees. Mm -hmm. Because, so you look at all that and I'm like, if me doing that means that you're not gonna be corruptible, if you getting this amount of money means that you're not gonna be corrupt because we're giving you so much that you can give the people on the street a, a, little, a few of your coins and we survive, then I'm actually not very against it. Car allowance to me, that one, don't even count because being a politician is about moving, it's about <laughs> people. If you can't move, then what are you doing? During COVID, a number of politicians suffered from COVID, getting COVID. The ones, some of them kept it a secret, others were very open about it. And it's because during COVID, while all of us were locked down in our houses, they still had to interact with people. Mm -hmm. But your job is service. And so, to me, if that is the case, car allowance, I am for. Now, does that stop me from wanting for my own selfish interests to run for MP? No, me, I want to run for MP now, and it has nothing to do with my people. Uh, it will, it will, 2027, <laughs> but it will. <laughs> you forget that the things on the internet are here forever. I'm just giving a hypothesis that what that does, what that salary invites is someone who's popular. Someone, not who someone who wants, good. not someone who's called to serve. It's someone who looks at this and says opportunity. Okay, Anna, what do you think? Because I'm sorry to cut you off, but time. Uh, it's okay, cut. Time, time. Okay, so I was trying to look into what other countries don't have such allowances. Mm. I, is there any? No, they all have these allowances. Yeah, they all have these allowances and they're quite a lot. Mm -hmm. um, so I, was, I read a paper, but granted, it might not work well with, um, African our context. with our context. But it did show that politicians who do earn more money... Mm -hmm tend to provide better services. There you go. My whole so point. I have a paper that's um, the opposite. <laughs> okay, so I, I was, but yeah, I felt like it wasn't yeah. maybe in, a, in our context, so mm -hmm. there's a lot that wasn't really brought in, like corruption mm -hmm. and all these things. But in terms of like the idea of, okay, because you have your people that you're serving, someone comes knocking on your door, mm -hmm. you're serving, let's say, one person, right? Then now tomorrow someone else comes knocking, you say no, mm -hmm. right? So you're... Would it not be better then to take the funds that you are given to serve your constituency mm -hmm. and set up a fund or something that will last and benefit mm -hmm. more people than the ones that have the ability to come knocking mm -hmm. on your, your door? door? So create a lasting legacy where you are helping these people versus mm -hmm. just helping the few people that are able to come and personally talk to you. Mm -hmm. Because wouldn't that also be something? And there's money allocated to serving your constituency. So before I allow you to speak, yes. I'm going to say that's a very utopian. Actually. That, and coming from me, that is saying no, no, no. something. Oh. I just, I, <laughs> hang on, hang on. Before you continue, I wow. just have two words. I just okay. have two words. Martin Shikuku. There you go. So whatever that means. I will explain. Um, I feel the, the perspective is very utopian because it does make perfect sense for a leader to set up um, something that stands yeah. the test of time that would reduce what people come to you for. Mm -hmm. But a number of leaders, if you talk to them one-on-one -on -one, or if you listen to some of their interviews, they say there are problems with that. Mm. You'll build a hospital or you'll build a bursary or uh, uh, those small hospitals or you'll build something that will help them. You'll create an education fund. But what will happen is 
because of the not, not, not enough one-on-one -on -one contact, you may still not get re-elected. Mm -hmm. And then you're looking at that. Or, or you may be financing this all the time thinking you're doing great things, and then you realize at points people have misappropriated your money or people don't appreciate it, they don't feel that's what they needed, so you've helped a certain constituent with that. But the next part of your constituency is like, that's not what we needed. But we needed this kind of support. They will not stop coming to your door. That's one thing that you have to learn. Politician, uh, being a politician is like being a celebrity in America. They will not stop coming at your door. They will be there all the time. I understand coming to your door. Okay, I understand if you're, if you're running and you're doing all this with the purpose of solely getting re-elected mm -hmm. to get back your benefits for the next five mm -hmm. years. Mm -hmm. The paper I read as well, mm -hmm. it's for politicians, they did well in their services, but mm -hmm. politicians whose aim was not re-election, mm -hmm. but service. Mm -hmm. so whether or not they were re-elected, <laughs> they the spent thing. their time, and that's what your MP should be doing. Whether yeah. or not you get re-elected, use your first term yeah, to, to do, do some things. things. The things you maybe if you get re-elected, then maybe do some other things. Mm -hmm. I don't know. No, don't, don't. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, so like, okay, the reason why I said, yeah, so the reason why I said Martin Shikuku is because he never, like, when he he never used to give out handouts, and his mm -hmm. constituents still re-elected him, right? Mm -hmm. this, th this this idea that like uh, the MPs constantly say, I need more money because my constituents are using like an ATM. Mm -hmm. uh, forgive my French. Is, is, is a bit of a lie. It's mm -hmm. just an excuse for you to keep asking for more and more money mm -hmm. because for one reason or another, like the funds you've been given to help your constituents have been misappropriated. Mm. So now you have to use your own money, right? Mm -hmm. um, number one. Number two, um, I wanted to raise the other point, which was that like, if you're having an MP earn like a salary that is so much higher than most Kenyans will ever see in their lifetime, mm -hmm. right? Per month, that's just how much money they're making. Mm -hmm. Doesn't that make them out of touch the, with their constituents? Mm -hmm. It yes. takes them to like another Never tax agree. bracket mm -hmm. where they won't be able to, like, there's no, like, you're not relatable anymore. Mm -hmm. So when somebody's complaining to you, oh, we don't have water, for you it's like, but me, I have water, so. And doesn't that also cause resentment? Yeah, because mm -hmm. like. Because if I'm seeing my MP doing all kinds of things, <laughs> and he has all kinds of money but he's not serving me, mm -hmm. that's going to cause resentment. He might be serving you because you knocked on his door. Yes. Mm -hmm. But that's I'm true. not going to go knocking on so his door. So it's a very complex one. Um, for me, I think, I think all our answers have been wrapped up into the sentence I gave in the beginning. Which is? Which is, I'm not sure I'm supported, but I'm not sure I'm against it. I Basically, that's what all of you have said. I think I think we can all agree that MPs do deserve to be paid. Like what yes. they, they are sacrificing a huge part of their lives mm -hmm. to to do a, an act of public service, and mm -hmm. they should be fairly compensated for that. Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. but I don't think that compensation should be so high that it removes them from the people, from their people, from the reality yeah. of their people. Right? Well, yes. Yeah. What? Okay. If it's a seven hundred and ten k. Per month. Per month. Without salary, allowances. Your sitting allowance takes you to 900. If mm -hmm. that's what before. Yeah, if, yeah before, yeah. yeah. So that's, that's, that's why, why just money. to attend mm -hmm. and do your job are you getting paid? Mm. To like sit in parliament. Your, that's what your salary is for, for you to sit and do the things and you, you shouldn't be paid right. another 200K to go and do that. It's, it's an amazing thing. And then thing. if you don't attend, they just don't pay you. So that doesn't even force your MP to it actually doesn't. sit in because they're like, okay, if I'm happy with my 700K, I, mean, I, can just so I don't need you that. Get, you get a five year so contract. So is that really yeah. incentive for them to do their job? It's, a, it's, it's actually very interesting. That one, the, 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 the sitting allowance thing is, is interesting to me because I mean, um, I, I would love a sitting allowance. I would love to. A sitting for We would love that <laughs> right now. We would be coming we just out keep talking. every day. Every day, every three hours, we'd have a <laughs> sitting allowance for every week. That would be beautiful. However, if you've been, if you signed a contract to do a job, because being an MP is signing a contract with the people to do a specific mm. job, to represent their interests and to represent their democracy, mm. then why else do you need more? And I, that one I 100% I agree with. The full salary, hmm. Yeah. But the, 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 the sitting allowance, I do under, I do have questions mm. as to why. Um, so we're going to take a break right there. Then we'll come back after the break just to conclude the show. Welcome back to Work in Progress. Mm -hmm. Now to conclude the show, we did have a whole other segment planned, which is going to be a debate upon which philosophy is the best, the East, East versus West. The West and the African. But then we decided that we're going to, we don't have time for that. People really like talking today. So we'll, we're going to end with my philosophy story. 
Mm-hmm. Yes. And talk and I'll give you guys a story because we've all talked about leadership. That's basically what we've talked about today. So back in third century AD, the king, what's called Tsao, hopefully I'm saying that right, sent his son to a master. Oh, to, I know the story. Yes, uh-huh. I've told it to you a couple of times. One of my favorite stories from the East. Mm. Um, to, so sent his son to a famous master mm-hmm. to teach him about um, being a good leader, being mm-hmm. a good ruler. And so the prince comes very energetically, very happy, meets um, the, the master. His name was Master Panku. Meets Master Panku. And uh, they have a conversation. And the first thing Master Panku says, go to the forest for one year. Sit there in the silence. Come back after one year and report to me what you've heard. So the prince is like, okay, sure, man. No problem, bro. So Mr. Miyagi <laughs> thinks. Let's go. So he goes. He spends a full year, day and night, in the forest, listening to the forest sounds. After that year is complete, he comes back to Master Panku and he recites what he heard. He's like, what did you hear? Mm. He's like, oh, I heard the crickets creaking. I heard the, the, gra- the forest's wind blowing the trees. Mm. I heard animals. The master looked at him very puzzled and said, no, you're not ready. Go back. And so the, the, the prince was very shocked. He's like, what do you mean go back? I've done this. But he does it. He goes back and he stays there day and night and day and night and day and night until after some time the silence starts to make him listen to something. Mm. The silence actually has a noise. And so when he's listening to the silence, he, he realizes he could hear more than that. He could hear the moisture turning on the grass. He could hear. So he came back and he said, um, let me read to you the last um, paragraph. And so when Prince returned to the temple, the master asked him what, once more what he had heard. He said, Master, responded the prince reverently, when I listened most closely, I could hear the unheard, the sound of flowers opening, the sound of the sun warming the earth, and the sound of the grass drinking the morning dew. The master nodded approvingly, and he said, to hear the unheard is a necessary discipline to be a good ruler. For only when a ruler has learned to listen closely to the people's hearts, hearing their feelings and communicated pains unexpressed and complaints not spoken of, can he hope to inspire confidence in his people, understand when something is wrong, and meet the true needs of his citizens. So it's a cry to, it's a, it's a call to, mm. to leaders across. No man, look at me being an inspiring GK. Mm. <laughs> Don't always listen to the people. Listen to the unheard cries that they share. Thank you very much for watching. We will be with you next week.